Welcome to Make Your Statement, the podcast that delves into the world of signs and visual graphics and the role they play in assisting companies to make their statement. Today, we're delighted to welcome Camilla Kasperowicz, Marketing Director at UAP Group, a leading supplier of door hardware in the UK. For a number of years, UAP have trusted Fast Signs to deliver it on a number of projects, both interior and exterior, to bring to life the company's vision for their brand identity. Welcome to Make Your Statement, Camilla. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So tell me, what prompted UAP Group to undertake this visual or this latest visual uh, branding overhaul? And how has it complemented your overall marketing strategy? I, th- I think in my opinion, it's absolutely crucial um, to have this good branding and visual identity uh, as a company, especially with the, in the current market, fast, fast-paced, growing market. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's very, very important to have a good vis- visual identity, but mm-hmm. also a branding. And sometimes we forget that branding is not only a visual aspect, but it's, but it's everything that stands behind the brand. Yeah. And um, as one example, I can give you as an example, you know, you, you've got a great branding as a fast science, mm-hmm. but I, from a customer perspective, I see you as a fantastic customer service, being on time, you know, all of those aspects. Yeah, build, every touch build, point. Exactly. Yeah. Build, um, build a brand mm-hmm. and how the customers perceive the brand. So I, I would say visual identity, but also everything behind the brand, it, it makes it a whole so thinking about the recent uh, upgrade that you've done to uh, the, the group's appearance, what prompted this? What prompted UAP to undertake the overhaul? And how has it complemented your overall marketing strategy? So the reason why we undergo the recent um, branding exercise on, the, uh, on our building is because we moved to new premises. Mm-hmm. So it was always our dream to have all our brands under one roof. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at the moment, the UEP g- g- grew from a small company, family-run business, to a big company that we are uh, today. Excellent. So from our CEO, a spare bedroom, to now 64,000 um, square meters wow. um, promises. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big um, improvement. So having all brands under one roof... Uh, prompt us to have a great branding on the building. Mm-hmm. And we... We are now in the ex call center. It used to be O2 Telefonica Tesco oh. um, call center. Oh, okay. During pandemic, they they were um, they had to close. Right. Um, so the building um, was left out empty, mm-hmm. um, and it was per- it's based in Bury. We were always based in Whitefield, so it's only a mile down the road sure. do- down the road from us. And so we yeah we decided to keep everything under one roof, and it was a we, when we received the bill, when we received the keys, it was a shell. It right. was empty, empty bill, there was nothing on it. So yeah. for me, it was a dream. I was going to say, so, it's quite Yes, exciting, exactly. It? So um, I phoned Aaron straight away. I was like, Aaron, we've got this building, we need the signage. Because that was the first thing. We, we started with the signage before anyone moved in to the right. building. Yeah. So it's Just important. to identify the building. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it was very important for us to have, you know, a totems on the side, um, high-rise signage on top, mm-hmm. but also we've got this beautiful, massive window in the front of the building, yeah. which we've put vinyl on mm-hmm. with a big UAP, UAP logo. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's, it's fantastic. And everyone is, uh, yeah, praising us. So good, for, some good feedback that actually yes. brings me to... Uh, what has what have been the immediate kind of impacts from a staff point of view and a trade point of view? Have people been complimenting on what you've done? Oh yes, yeah, d- definitely. It's hard so, not to notice it for certain. Ex- exactly, yes. So um, the the first the first uh, first thing was from from the staff and fellow directors. So they 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 were first to say how amazing it is and it's just show how big UAP is at the moment because mm-hmm. we are the, we are um, at this moment in time third biggest door hardware manufacturer in the UK. Mm-hmm. So, you know, no pressure. We, 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 we have to, <laughs> we, we, we have to uh, you know, uh, sh- show it. So, yeah, the, the new building, new, new signage, definitely um, showcasing how big we are, how, how much we've grown over the years. I mean, it's not lost on us at all what a responsibility it is for somebody in your position, one, to select a supplier that you can trust, uh, but to to oversee all of this, that 
I'm sure there must be some nightmares that you have thinking, what if it all looks terrible? What if it all looks wrong? What if the colours are out and what? And then it all shows up on the day and you go, and it's perfect, exactly. <laughs> I think one thing for me was, um, if it's not too over the top, yeah. shall I maybe downsize it? it? But no, yeah, that was a, it's, a, it's a beautiful building. Mm. Um, yeah, it was a blank canvas for us, so it was it was a good exercise, I think, for both of us. Right. To yeah. to undergo this. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, every every project that we we get involved with, the first part of what we try and do is get an understanding of. Well, what is the vision? And if somebody was going too big or it was just going to be uncomfortable to look at visually, we'd always try and give people that advice to say, maybe just scale Scale back and just pull back on that a little bit. The example I always give is the sole trader with a van that comes to us to get its sign written. Yes. And they want everything they've ever done in their career put in this minutia of text yeah. all over this van, believing that some passing customer is going to stand there and read all of this detail. Yeah. The truth yeah. is, you get between two and three seconds of somebody's time to of get course. your message across. Definitely. So w- that would be a prime example of where we would try to say to somebody, Maybe you need just to focus on the key messages. Yeah, rather less is than more. Always. Everything you've ever done. <laughs> yes. You know, a, a tree surgeon maybe that wants to list every type of tree they've ever worked on or whatever it might be. Yeah. But that kind of detail, whilst very important to them and probably very proud of what they've done, the average customer is going to give it two to three seconds and might miss the core message yeah. unless the core message is really prominent. So yeah. I think that's a big part of what we try to bring to the party to say to somebody, okay, at the end of the day, we will do whatever you want us to do, but have you thought X or have you thought Y yeah. and try to be consultative with with you guys with- as a customer to get to what your vision is in a way that works. Yeah, no, that's definitely what, what what we found with working with you guys. Because as, as as I mentioned, we've got the new building, so we've got the UEP, we've got other brands, and the top floor is good. The, the building there's the three floors plus massive warehouse. So on the top floor, we've got the a new brand, which is Fire Door Maintenance FDM, which is more like a training facility. Oh, and that's a completely different branding to what UEP has. It's slightly separate. Um, but yeah, when when I've asked. Um, Aaron to come over and, and help with us. Um, what we did is the training. So we will be training the fire door inspectors and fire door maintenance guys oh. to, for on, on the fire door. So we had um, an empty floor. We've built up um, walls mm-hmm. um, and it looks like to, re- to replicate the apartment, high rise building apartment blocks. Oh, okay. uh, but we co- because we've built it and it will be a training, so people will be removing and fitting doors all mm. the time. So we needed something hard wearing. Yeah. So what what you guys suggested was to use, um, you know, the composite mm-hmm. cladding yeah. on, on the walls, and that was one of those uh, times when I thought, oh, is, is it the right decision? But then as soon as you guys fitted it, it's just it mind blowing. It's perfect. Yeah. It, it, it looks really. And uh, Nicola John, who is the managing director of FDM. Yeah. She said to me, I want something dramatic, and we delivered. It, 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 is, it, is, it is amazing. It, it looks looks fantastic. Excellent. And great time to be getting involved in training in that area, because certainly since the start of 2023, yeah. as the Grantville report came out, yeah. there's been so much change, so much legislative change. I mean, we're working with a lot of building managers of high-rise flats, etc., that have had to really relook at uh, the way that signage is operating of in course. those high-rise buildings, yeah. so that the emergency services can get people out quickly and safely. Of course, yeah, it's, it, so, it, so it, it sounds it's like crucial, you've got yeah. in at a really good time when yes. there's so much change, and yeah. people are struggling still. I think you know, we're getting towards the end of 2023, but still, there's a lot of people running just to catch up. Yeah, and get back up to date with legislation. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a massive field, you know, and it's 
I think it's massive and it's complicated because it's so important. Yeah. Because you 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 are dealing with the people's life. Absolutely. And it's absolutely important to have it right from the very very beginning. Absolutely. So what 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 you fitting on the door? How is testing um, looking? What products uh, are you supplying? Yeah. So it, it's yeah, it's it's what they call the golden thread. Yes. So from the very beginning, there's a lot of stages that yeah. all need to line up. I think it's uh, admirable that a company uh, like yourselves are jumping in, not just on supplying products and services, but supplying that much needed uh, training that is helping people to just to get back up to speed with all these changes that have come through. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm sure that will help feed into product sales sooner or later, but it is a massive, massive gap. And probably, I'm, I, I don't know, but certainly working with the number of building managers that we work with and managers of multiple apartment blocks, maybe those guys would be a prime uh, example of people who could come in and get to grips with uh, some of uh, oh, the training that you provide. Definitely. In, in UEP, we... It was always in our, on our agenda to support the customer, not only with the products, but also with the knowledge. Yeah. So we've got a, a very knowledgeable team of salespeople, um, technical uh, team that is always happy to help and happy to advise to mm. our customers. And we are also very proactive with helping with uh, fire door tests right? Um, to test our products, but also test um uh, doors of our customers, fabricators. Oh, okay. So it, it, it is very important for us to be upfront yeah. uh, in this uh, training uh, developments. Absolutely. In the industry. Absolutely. I think, as I said, there's one thing that has to come out of all that's gone on in London at uh, Granfell's got to be looking forward to a time when the lessons get learned of and course. something like that could never happen again. Exactly. And you know, it's not lost that on me, certainly, uh, the role that a company like UAP can, can play in that, yeah. the kind of training that you're providing. So looking on to digital evolution, sustainable marketing, with UAP's visual identity evolving, how has the company's digital marketing landscape adapted under your guidance? Um, so as I mentioned before, when we started 27 years ago, I've, I've joined UAP in 2013, so 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and the, definitely there was a journey from printed materials, yeah. new websites, to more advanced digital marketing as we, as we yeah. see it um, t today. Because a website back then, if you had one at all, was basically a brochure online, wasn't it? Exactly, and yes. that was probably about yeah. the extent of it. Yeah, we, we even did this um, a project at UAP where we've got, uh, on a website you can see uh, different stages of uh, how our website looked right. through the years. So starting in 1996 up until now. Wow. So you, you could see the styles and how it all grew and developed. So it's, it's, it's brilliant. Fantastic. But with the most recent um, things we're introducing is definitely e-commerce. Right. UAP was always uh, focused on trade, so it was very B2B mm -hmm. orientated, but with such a fast growing uh, market in DIY um, and the home improvement, we saw the opportunity to, to go uh, onto e-commerce. Yeah. And that's what this year especially, we started last year, but this year especially we are, we are pushing and focusing on, on e-commerce uh, mm -hmm. more. One of the uh, companies that we acquired uh, last year was Export, and they are specializing in uh, Amazon. So they are uh, okay. experts in uh, Amazon online sales. Okay. Wow. Uh, but we also uh, now do DIY.com, which is B&Q Marketplace. Right. Uh, we are on, on eBay, so we, we are trying and looking at different avenues yeah. um, for the business. I mean, ultimately, people want to shop when they want to shop. Exactly. If it's on Saturday afternoon, having just watched the match and got some downtime, oh, need to get that done. And, exactly. Or late at night, even, you know, it's like, you know, you had dinner, buy to eat, it's like something just springs to your mind. You open your laptop and you want yeah. to be able to get it off your list rather than have to make a list to come into work with tomorrow morning, yeah. at any time of the day or night. Definitely. The, 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 one, the, one, the um, thing about that is we have to adjust our warehouse and our operations to work with, with B2C. Because right. it, it's so much different than B2B. Sure. Um, so it, it is um, a dance between you know, 
marketing, digital so uh, it's B2C sales. really being driven by the online presence or is that something that you'd always got a foot in the B2C camp but never perhaps on a direct basis it was always to a retailer or... um, no I, I think it's mo mostly driven by by the online uh, right. market and how much it, it grew over the years yeah um, because as, as I said like a majority of our um, customers is still b2 b2b right uh, and that's the core of our of our sure. business but um, you know the online market is, is huge and as, as you said the cost there's so many customers who wants to buy um, on the uh, online sure that we, we, we just need to adapt to it. Absolutely, absolutely. So you've championed sustainable initiatives, especially in marketing. How do these eco-conscious decisions intertwine with UAP's brand image? We, we've, we had, um, a few years ago, we had a, our tagline was a hardware that doesn't cost the earth. Ah. Be, because we, we want to make sure that all, uh, you know, from the supply chain, to the end user, yeah. the hardware is sustainable. Yeah. So we could, for example, look at aluminium, which uh, you know our aluminium products can be recycled over and over and over indefinitely. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, from the other hand, we've got also stainless steel, mm -hmm. which is a um, hardwearing product yeah. that you it, it won't go to landfill that that that, mm -hmm. that quick because. Um, it can last forever, yes. pretty much, and we even uh, offer a lifetime coating guarantee on it. So, oh, wow. um, so yeah, we, we are very into sustainable um, mm -hmm. approach, and very recently we are we focused on the packaging a lot to reduce the amount of packaging, but also for B two B market, we've started to introducing hardware packs, where you're reducing packaging by having multiple products. In, in one, one, in one, yeah. in one, which um, which not only it's better for fabricators because mm -hmm. when they're producing door, it's about how fast they could produce it, how fast they can sure. fit, fit the hardware. So if they are having it in one pack, mm -hmm. they can open one pack, fit it quickly, yeah, and that's done. Get in, in, get out. Yeah, exactly, yeah. getting get out instead of having multiple uh, multiple um, packages to unpack, fit, figure it out. Sure, fantastic. Um, the other Actually, is... it's so logical, you'd think, <laughs> yeah. well, why was it just done that way all along? All the, yeah, exactly. It's a logical step, yeah. but yeah. it's almost like, well, we, we've got there and we thought of it, but it, you'd almost think it was always done as an outsider yeah. point of view. You'd think it, it was it naturally be, oh, yeah. done it's, that way. Ex exactly. Fantastic. Um, the other initiatives we, we had, um, a lot of products that are coming from our factories, because we've got our own factories in in China when we manufacture. We also sure. got our own Chinese office mm -hmm. uh, in in Schengen, and so they are fantastic team uh, for you know quality check and making sure the packaging is um, as we wanted it to to right. be. So reducing the plastic, um, but you know a lot of stuff is still coming on the pallets and or a big crate. Mm -hmm. So what we've encouraged our customers to do is to reuse those pallets. So we run an initiative where the customer could win a voucher for five hundred pound if they will send us the. It was the like pallets, a little, right? little yeah, yeah pallets make. So you know the people were making um, gin bars. Uh, you know the outer wow. furniture f f from the stuff. So you know a little, little stuff like stuff like that. And then we we would share it on the social media, which then again build your brand awareness on this uh, sustainable level. And that segues very nicely into the next section for me that I wanted to cover, which is community, charity, and well-being uh, in the brand image. So more specifically, beyond product marketing, you are involved in charity and community programs. How does these initiatives shape UAP's overall brand narrative? Again, our CEO is very, very into um, well-being, uh, supporting uh, especially local charities. Right. So we, for example, we've planted um, fifteen uh, thousand trees, wow. uh, which uh, would offset our carbon um, emission. We have built a school in Nepal. To, 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 to help, um, oh, you know, so that was more like um, a community orientated. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, we tend to do a lot around um, charities. Um, yes, yeah, so our CEO, David Jennings, he uh, is supporting Encaphalitis Society, oh. which is a brain inflammation, inflammation uh, yeah. ch char charity. 
Uh, so he donated um, a big amount of money mm -hmm. um, to, to the charity. And we continue to, to support um, even smaller local charities uh, as well. We also tend to support um, our own um, staff. So if there is um, a, a team member that a kid is in a football uh, club right. and that needs a hoodies or yep. they need a sponsor, we are, we are always happy to, to spon sponsor, oh, sponsor, sponsor them. So the road ahead, uh, merging marketing with uh, visual identity, with UAP's rich history, how do you see the refreshed visual branding carrying the legacy forward? Oh, to, to be fair, the, the, the signage and the branding we, we did with you guys, that, that's just the phase two. Okay. And I think we've got like another five or six wow. phases to go. So I've, I've met with, with Aaron this week and we are now looking at um, the wayfinding wayfinding um, okay. uh, solutions for the inside of the building because now we've got all all of us are now in a new building mm -hmm. so the outside uh, are nice and beautiful yeah. or, or already but yeah there is the inside aspect uh, of it so when we first started to work work with you guys um i think it was like five years ago yeah somewhere around that our first project with, was um this beautiful timeline mm -hmm. the uap timeline in the, in the boardroom yes so from from, from, from from 1996 mm -hmm. uh, up until 2021. Yeah. Um, so what what I'm planning to do is move this timeline now and have it uh, on the walls in our reception. Okay. Um, with you know, and there's the walls in the reception are um, are quite big and quite mm -hmm. long. So we will be able to add to the timeline yeah, as, as we these. go and keep, yeah. keep, keep building it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Then on the, on the first floor um, of our building, we will, we've got this little link room, which will be our showroom. Right. And again, um, we will use some probably vinyl and mm -hmm. up lighters yeah. uh, to, to, to present the products and, and showcase what, um, what UAP has got to offer. And, and, and then, yeah, the, the top room, which is our training facility, and so again, we've got the cladding done, but then each room will represent a different part of the fire door. And yet again, we'll need your help, guys, to, to help us and decorate the inside of the room. Well, so, we'll be there every step of the way for <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Any so, way we can help, we'll be there. So, yeah, so I, I could, yeah, definitely there is a lot of branding to, to brand and, and to, uh, to do. So, yeah. So before we go, and thank you so much for all the input into the podcast, but I really can't let you go without sharing the exciting news of your really recent uh, success at uh, some awards. Uh, would you like to, I believe, is it two that the company or people associated with, I'm, I'm spoiling your thunder here. I'm going to throw <laughs> it right over to you. Tell us about the awards. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, indeed. We, we won the two awards on the recent uh, National Fenestration Awards Fantastic. event in, in Doncaster. Uh, first um, for a hardware company of the year. So UAP is a hardware company of the year. Congratulations. 23, thank you. And the second for our CEO, David Jennings, for uh, lifetime achievements in and the industry. Fantastic on both counts. But tell us a little bit more about how those awards are judged and is it a panel of uh, judges that sit in the darkened smoke-filled room and <laughs> hand out and decide or is it peers what is the yeah, that, criteria that, that, that's the very very interesting question because uh, why the awards are so important to us is because it is uh, people industry in the industry voting for people in, in the industry fantastic and so that means uh, a lot for UAP that we've been noticed that the work we are doing, the hard work that we are doing is paying off. Yes. And it's a testimony, testimonial for everyone uh, in the company. And I think it, it always does mean more when it's people who are as involved in it and know as much about it. And in some cases, as much or more for some people have been around for a longer period of time. When it is your peers that turn around and give you that pat on the back, of course. it is so special. So congratulations, UAP. And congratulations, David, for being recognised in uh, such an outstanding way. And what an amazing testament to a business that literally started in a back bedroom. It certainly is, yes. Thank Fantastic you. <laughs> news. Um, for listeners eager to d delve deeper into UAP Group and, it, and connect with Camilla and your products and services, what's the best way for them to do that? Where should they head? Online? Through LinkedIn? 
what's the best way for your customers to reach out? I, I think we're both. I think mainly uh, our website, so uapcorporate.com, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, yeah, the people can find all the details, our history, our products, uh, get in touch with our sales team. But we are also very uh, active um, online on social media. Um, Brilliant. So yeah, we are very happy to answer any questions. Fantastic. That people might have. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate your time and taking time out to come in and talk to us and share your insights. Very, thank very you. valuable and we really appreciate it. And of course, we appreciate the ongoing partnership. So thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. You're very welcome. Thank, thank you. you. If you found today's conversation as enlightening as we did and you're keen to discover more stories of businesses making their unique statements, be sure to hit the subscribe button on your favourite podcast platform. We have many more fascinating conversations lined up for you in the coming weeks. You can also watch how these conversations unfold by subscribing to our YouTube channel, where you'll get the added advantage of seeing our guests in action all the way from our Manchester office. We promise you won't want to miss it.